we could hang upon an endless clothesline all the garments we've worn from birth to life's twilight, we would feel the rhythm of time's fleeting course. And if we could spread upon it all the feats of our mothers and fathers, and ours as well, we would weave lace upon wire, swaying in the wind's tender embrace. Everything begins, endures, and ends. Sometimes in a roar, sometimes unnoticed. Wear and tear that quiet story no one cares to hear, least of all the sellers. Spares nothing, not even them. On Thursday at rush hour, I wonder about the car graveyard's capacity to store our fleeting shells. The rare materials they're made of will end up, like everything else, in the dump, alongside our paperbacks and encyclopedias, our favorite shoes, and our lifetime guaranteed Tupperware. When the traces of what we once were are swept away, our vanities and pretensions gone, what will remain of us? Why, after all, should our civilization be immortal? And why, of all species, should ours evade the fate that befalls the rest? From where does this bold claim arise to live forever, never reaching the end of what we are? Typhoons and fires come to raise what we hold dear, what we twisted in every guise we could conjure. But is it truly so grave, I wonder? 20 million years from now, when a new natural order has replaced our own, what will living beings look like? And what will they have inherited from us? If birds are the remnants of dinosaurs, I like to think that the creatures of the planet's next chapter will have kept a part of us. In their gestures, their gaze, their stride. Perhaps they will have freed themselves from our ambitions, our pride, and our fantasies of immortality. All that will remain of us then will be a few harmless ideas, the intangible legacy of our wild loves and noble souls, encapsulated in the amber of our vanished societies. <laughs>